This shows where the suprasternal view of the aorta is taken. So the probe is up here now, and we're scanning through the aortic arch and the vessels, and then on to the heart beneath. So this is another view where we need to alter the position of our patient slightly, because we're going to scan suprasternally from the suprasternal notch. So Kim, if you don't mind, I'm just going to put these pillows underneath your shoulders, and then ask you to extend your neck down like that. We need to be quite careful with this view. It's not particularly comfortable, and it's certainly not for the elderly if they've got stiff necks. And having pressure there at the suprasternal notch is quite unpleasant, so it's always a good idea just to keep checking that the patient's feeling all right. So I will get my probe and make sure that the notch is pointing towards the left shoulder, and then I'll just position in the suprasternal notch like this. Um, I can reduce my depth here. I think my width is about right. Um, to find the view, sometimes it's useful to put some colour on because the blue surge down the descending aorta that we see here can help you navigate yourself a bit. And what I'm looking for are the head and neck vessels up here. So one, two, and there will be one up here as well. That's what it should look like. This is a diagram of the suprasternal view of the aorta. Our probe will be at the top of the screen here. We're looking at the ascending aorta, the arch itself, and then the descending aorta here. We also get the head and neck vessels. So this first one is the anominate. Some people call it the brachiocephalic artery. Then we have the left common carotid, and then we have the left subclavian. Sometimes you can see the right branch of the pulmonary artery beneath the arch. So we're going to be scanning in the suprasternal view. So I'm pointing the probe notch towards the left shoulder, so I can see the arch like this. I'm going to have a hunt around for those head and neck vessels. They're not the easiest to see, uh, and the colour Doppler hopefully will help me. So what I'm looking for are three different vessels coming off up here at the arch. There we are. So there's. One, two, three. So we have the nominate, the left cephalic, and the left subclavian's there. So I'm just going to alter my view here to get more of the descending aorta in. And I'll just put some colour there, and we'll see the flow down the descending aorta. We'll see how it's more turbulent as it goes around the inside of the arch there. We don't see the ascending aorta particularly well, which would be here, but we are seeing the right branch of the pulmonary artery. If we had a patent ductus arteriosus, we might see it in this view. If we had a patient with aortic regurgitation, we would put colour here and look for a surge of red up the descending aorta. Um, this is actually a normal amount of flow up the descending aorta. We see it on this inner side here and it's quite a, a brief flash. So that's actually a normal finding. If there was a coarctation, we would notice that usually around here somewhere and that would be a narrowing at the top of the descending aorta and what would flag us there would be turbulent flow. But this is all nice and normal. Because we're not seeing so much of the ascending aorta, the top of the ascending aorta here, and we might want to, if a patient is suspected uh, of having a dissection, we might be really keen to see that bit of the aorta. Uh, what we can do is just try moving the patient. So if you don't mind rolling onto your right side, so you're facing me, let's take one of these pillows away, that's it. And what we do is we scan, we just move over a little bit, so we're scanning again with the probe pointed towards the left shoulder in the second or third rib space like this. And here we're getting the ascending aorta, and if I'm not sure whether it is or not, I'll just put colour on and I'll see that I've got systolic flow and a really nice view actually of the top of the ascending aorta, which so I could measure the diameters and I could check for dissection. So I hope you liked this video. 
absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.